Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize, my name is Eddie Keogh. I'm a beef farmer from County Wexford, producing most of my beef from a 90 cow suckler herd with a small proportion of animals bought in. All animals on the farm is brought through to finish. First of all, I'd just like to say a big thank you to my kind sponsors, Meat Industry Ireland, who awarded me the 2013 Beef Nutfield Scholarship and for supporting me over the past two years. And a big thank you to Nutfield Ireland for this great opportunity. I'd just like to start with a quote from Eamon de Valera. We cannot afford idleness, waste, or inefficiency. This rang true in Eamon de Valera's time and is still relevant in Irish beef farming today. My topic, maximize the utilization of grazed grass in beef production to meet market demands of the future. That leads me into my three topics, or my three objectives. My first objective, to investigate methods to maximize the quantity and quality of grass grown on Irish beef farms. Currently on Irish beef farms, we we, we beef farmers have a stocking rate of 1.6 livestock units per hectare when compared to our Irish dairy farmers with 2.25 livestock units per hectare. My second objective, to consider when we have the grass grown, to consider the grass management techniques best to utilize this grass. From my research and studies, the day for animals running wild in big fields is gone. And to focus on identifying suitable animals for future market demands. And the, the countries I visited on my studies, the three main countries, was New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and Brazil. And my reasons for traveling to New Zealand, New Zealand have a very similar climate to Ireland, yielding up to 16 tons of dry matter per hectare and utilizing 80% of this grass grown. My reason for traveling to the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom, we, we export, sorry, 90% of our beef. Of that 90% of our beef, over 60% is exported to the UK market. So a very substantial and important market for Irish beef farmers. And Brazil, Brazil is the second biggest producer of beef in the world, producing most of their beef from a grass-based system. On my travels, it was emphasized the importance of correct soil conditions to maximize our soils. Correct soil density to allow water and nutrients to be absorbed through the soils. An efficient and effective drainage system to remove excess water from the soil, allow good grass and management practice to be implemented, and to extend our grazing season early spring and late autumn. And the importance of soil fertility to maximize our growth potential from our soil. A phosphorus and potassium index three and a pH of 6.3. In New Zealand, I visited some of the biggest grass-based dairy farms in the world. I visited a lot of grass-based beef farms, and I visited Lincoln University. But I'm a very proud man to return home and be able to say that some of the best research and findings I had was conducted in Moor Park and Grange. But when I con conclu conclude my studies and travels abroad and my studies back home, I'm very confident to say paddock rotation grazing is the most efficient and effective system to maximize the utilization and growth of grass. When we have paddocks in place on our farm, the importance of measuring grass. Allowing animals in onto a pre-grazing height of 10 centimeters setting our stocking rate suitable to animal demands and suitable to the amount of grass available in our paddock. And the importance of eating that grass in 48 hours. We, when grass is eaten, we get regrowth after 48 hours. And if that regrowth is eaten by animals, it will take a further seven to 10 days for this regrowth to reemerge and have a very negative effect on the production of our paddock. And just a post-grazing height of four centimeters to increase tillering and incre increase the quality of our grass. The simplest way for me to illustrate the benefits of paddock rotation grazing is through the use of my own profit monitor and figures when I implemented paddock rotation grazing on my farm. With paddock rotation grazing in place, my stocking rate improved, went from 2.68 to 3.35 through increased grass growth, uh, paddock rotation grazing, measuring, and budgeting. My stocking rate in 2000, or my kilos per hectare in 2013 of my own farm was 1,566 kilos per hectare, giving me a net profit of 1,004 euro per hectare. That figure improved greatly, and I'd like to say that to be a profitable farmer, not everyone needs to be a dairy farmer. We as beef farmers can make profits as well. The biggest contributor to my, uh, to my net profit was uh, increased stocking rate 
increased animal performance and a reduction in my variable costs. And the biggest reduction in my variable costs was due to early spring grass and the importance of closing down paddocks early in autumn. From the, from the 10th of October, starting down, closing down paddocks in the ten, by the, the 1st of November, 60% of the farm closed and by the 1st of December, 100% of our farm closed. Research showing range, every extra day a cow and calf is a grass is a savings of 154 euro. That's a massive savings on any Irish beef farm. And with early spring grass in place, I reduced my winter period from a six month winter period to a three month winter period. And allowed animals out early. But the importance of when we're closing down our paddocks is to close down the paddocks closest to the farmyard. That we can allow animals out in early February, and if weather don't permit, we can practice on-off grazing. On-off grazing has been practiced on the dairy farms for years, and there's no reason why it wouldn't work on a beef farm. Allowing our animals out, returning them back in after a couple of hours when they get their fill, and do this until weather improves or weather permits. And my focus on beef demands, I visited the UK, like I say, our most important outlet for beef. I visited Tesco, Sainsbury and Asda, three of the biggest retail outlets for Irish beef in the UK. I met the market managers and had a meeting with them. I visited some processing plants and I also visited Dawn Meats Packaging Group. In Dawn Meats Packaging Group, the Consumer Insight Manager made me aware of fixed size packaging and the benefits of fixed size packaging. Fixed size packaging was put in place for consumer benefits and allowed the consumer as the consumer packaging regulated the size of the meat, the weight of the meat, and most of all, the price of the meat. This allowed the consumer to budget from week to week what beef cost was going to be. With this packaging in place, sales increased by 50 to 60%, a massive increase in sales of beef. The most suitable animal or carcass for this packaging is an animal from 300 kgs to 380 kgs, preferably a confirmation or three or four, aged under 30 months. But an animal, a 16 month under bull beef animal is also suitable for this packaging under a weight limit of 380 kilos. I believe Ag Aberdeen Angus and Hereford is a suitable animal for this packaging and it's suitable to finish off a grass based system and will be an animal come readily available from the dairy herd post 2015 with the abolition of dairy quota. And increased use of sex semen this will also help to produce beef animals suitable for the farmer, beef farmer to finish off a grass-based system and it will take the big emphasis off the keep of the suckler cow and dilute the cost of keeping a suckler cow. And we can increase our stocking rate and increase numbers with these animals. Uh, Brazil, my visit, to, my visit to Brazil was certainly the highlight of my nut field. I was a country I always wanted to visit and very appropriate because they're the second biggest producer of beef in the world. And this is a picture I've taken on a farm, a 40,000 hectare farm. These are zebu animals eating Bracaria grass, the local grass in their in the country or their native grass. But the, the key point in Brazil was, Brazil was producing an animal most suitable to consumer demands, most suitable to the climate and most suitable to the grass available in our country and to perform off this grass. When I was in Brazil, I was made aware of that only 4% of beef comes from a feedlot system. 96% is grass-based. But of that 4%, Brazilian farmers makes, gets the maximum growth of, on their animal and weight gain on their animal from their grass before entering this expensive system, making full benefit of the natural resource they have in their country, grass. I visited JBS process plant, which was, JBS is one of the biggest protein uh, companies in the world. I visited that, I was made aware of how they slaughter animals, which was very similar to Ireland. But one key concern I had when I was there, traceability, origin, age, quality assurance was not important. I wasn't emphasized at all. And I believe we as Irish beef farmers always have Brazilian beef in the back of our mind. But I believe if we continue to, to produce beef to the quality of the standards we do today, 
there's no reason why we as Irish farmers would not have an outlet for Irish beef. My key my conclusions, paddock rotation grazing will increase forage production, increase carrying capacity, increase animal performance, and most of all, increase profit margins, most important. And while we produce a consistent quality animal, suitable for fixed size packaging, suitable for cons consumer demands is key. Suitable for consumer demands. And my recommendations, I believe the farm advisory systems need to develop a discussion group for, for uh, beef farmers to educate them of the significant benefits to be obtained through paddock rotation grazing and educate them in the system and benefits of measuring and budgeting of grass. The beef, and I believe the beef breeding and beef breeding programs of Ireland and the beef industry would benefit from the use of specific breeds to produce a consistent quantity of animal finished off a grass-based system. And consideration of further research into the use of composite breeds. In the UK, I visited Genus where they would be aware of a composite breed, a four-way cross of animal, with great figures shown, but I believe with further research, it could be a bit benefit to Irish beef farmers, the use of a composite breed. My take-home message for everyone here today is, with good grassland management practices in place, and producing a consistent quality animal suitable for consumer demands, beef farming can be a profitable business. Thank you. Thank you.